Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays. As I almost trip and fall in my chair. Welcome guys. To Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays collection. I'm out of breath. Um, this is a channel where I show off some of my collection, new and old. And um, also like showing stuff off by directors, doing director specials, actors, actresses specials, and genres such as, you know, black exploitation, war movies, detective, noir, stuff like that. So anyway, guys, uh, before we get to this, um, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, uh, subscribe today and hit the bell so you're notified when I release a new episode. And also... If you like this, after it's over with, no pressure, give me a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm somehow. That's what they say anyways. And uh, comment. Also, let me know what you thought about this episode. I'm, would, I would love talking to you guys. So, let's get right to it. Today, I am going to show some movies. Uh, new and old. Uh, these are uh, some thrillers, I guess you could say. Um, some great movies some horror type movies got some great detective mystery movies in here let's get right to it now here's a movie that is completely underrated completely i had never even heard about this this is one of the hard, one of the harder to find movies um there is i in my opinion personally now, this is a Region B release on DVD. Um, I heard about this movie uh, watching or listening to the Pure Cinema podcast hosted by uh, Brian Sauer. And uh, I always forget the other guy. Uh, but Brian has his own channel and podcast called Just the Discs, which you should definitely check out. Uh, which is, he's much better than I am, but uh, we have similar tastes uh, and stuff like that. He's right up my alley, my cup of tea with with his uh, movie C digs. So uh, this was something they were talking about um, on there. I think they might have been like unknown, like forgotten about thrillers and stuff that are just really under the radar. This is a movie from 1972. It's called Fear is the Key. And it stars uh, Barry Newman and Susie Kendall. And uh, it is a great movie pedal to the metal floor just flying through this movie i mean it is it takes you by the seat of your pants immediately uh barry newman coming off of um the great movie the, the previously uh previous year 1971 um what is it called vanishing point uh which was a big you know kind of a cult hit that year big breakout hit uh he's excellent in this again really good in it very underrated um, and Susie Kendall is really good. Uh, let me just briefly tell you about this movie. Um, it, it's a uh, they, they call this a classic British thriller. I guess it was made in you know for, with British cash, but it was filmed in America. It's based on a best-selling novel by Alastair MacLean, which uh, he's no slouch when it comes to suspense. Uh, Barry Newman is Josh Talbot, a man whose life erupts into tragedy when he hears his brother's voice on the radio of an aeroplane, aero, an airplane, uh, carrying his family, telling him that a plane is, is diving on them, firing, um, embarking on an elaborate revenge mission. Talbot finds himself pursued by the police and kidnappers alike. His destiny soon becomes entangled with the daughter of a multimillionaire, uh, played by uh, Susie Kendall. And uh, as uh, trapped together in a heavily guarded mansion, they begin a frantic search for the truth to this whole concocted story. Now, it's really good. Once it gets to that part of the story, you're just like, your mind's blown. I, I watched this movie that night, and my mind was really blown for a second. I was just like, wow, I did not see that coming. I can't believe this movie isn't more popular than it is. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it should be right up there with movies like Bullet and um, a lot of the great, you know, the French Connection movies that are, you know, real breakout thriller 
action-packed movies from the early 70s. It should be right there in the top 10 list for sure. Uh, it's sad that it's not for some reason. With even with Alastair McLean's, you know, story and everything, it's it's really bizarre that it's not a more popular movie. I guess it didn't have the big cast members in it though. But but uh, Barry Newman and Susie Kendall are great in this. It's also got a great supporting cast of characters, uh, henchmen goons everybody that you've seen in other movies great movie check it out fear is the key this is a region b uh release by the way next up this is a movie starring the lovely barbara Steele, who's known for uh, movies such as black sabbath and um uh what is it black black sabbath and uh, black sunday or something yeah um this is a movie called Nightmare Castle. This is a Severin release, Blu-ray. It also has on here Castle of Blood and Terror Creatures from the Grave. So it's a three-pack movie. And um, if you can get a good deal on it, it's really cool. Nightmare Castle was okay. It's kind of it's kind of different. I need to watch it a few more times. A Castle of Blood's a lot of fun. Um, everything like that. Uh, directed by Mario... Silano and Carlo. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I feel like a, a dunce, but I cannot say the last names. Uh, Cayano. Uh, music by Ennio Morricone, uh, which we all know the Maestro's music. Um, it's got a lot of different stuff here. It's got a lot of US UK trailers, deleted scenes from the different all the different movies on here. Um, and they all basically have Barbara Steele in it, so it's it's really cool. They're remastered and restored from the original uh, negatives. So um, yeah, check it out if you're a fan, of, especially of 1960s uh, horror, Italian horror, uh, even some Giallo and Giallo, Giallo, sorry, and uh, you know some of the Poe. Roger Corman Poe movies, some of the stuff like that. Really cool, really cool movie. It's got that Italian f flavor going. So, really cool. It's one of those movies to come back to. I'm definitely going to revisit this uh, during the uh, October month. So, there you go. Nightmare Castle. Next up, I was really, really, I really love this. I think Arrow may be one of my favorite labels. They just continuously put out some really good movies um, and just what they put out and how they package it, the art, the booklets, just everything they give you is just so, so cool, so loving. Um, so Arrow Video is really, really doing it. Um, this is a movie, um, this is a very early movie from Jack Hill who, you know, would go on and make coffee, uh, movies like that. Um, this is a movie called Pit Stop. And um, if, if you're a fan of Jack Hill, um, early 70s, did a lot of great movies. This is really, really good. Uh, made, when was this made? I think it was like 19, yeah, 69. This was made in 1969. Um, it's, got, it's got a lot of good stuff on it. It's got a, a director approved transfer. Um, it's got a new audio commentary. It's Crash and Burn, Jack Hill on the making of Pit Stop. Uh, it's got Drive Hard, a little uh, interview with Sid Haig, who stars in it. What's really cool is seeing Sid Haig younger with hair. And uh, it's really, oh man, this is it's such a great movie. It's one of those movies you can completely come back to and watch again and, and again. Uh, very underrated, I believe. Um, Richard Davalos uh, stars as Rick Bowman, a street punk who winds up in jail after a street race goes wrong. Uh, bailed out by race promoter Grant Willard, Davalos is put in the deadly track where he comes up against Haig's mana uh, maniacal, uh, Haig's maniacal uh, winner Hawk Sidney. Featuring an outstanding supporting cast, including Brian Dunleavy, which I think this was maybe his last movie. Um, star of countless movies from the 40s on. Um, Ellen Burstyn, very early Ellen Burstyn. 
Uh, Beverly Washburn from uh, Spider Baby, you might recognize her. But this is one of uh, Jack Hill's lesser known movies, and I think it's one of his really good movies. Um, uh, it was filmed on a real figure eight track. They do like figure eight racing, so it's like real tense and stuff like that. But, um, if you, I mean, even if you're fans of, of movies like um, The Fast and the Furious now, any kind of racing type movies, anything with some cars in it and stuff like that, I think you'll like this movie. It's really, it's really up there. But you don't have to be a car fan to love this movie because it's really, it, it's really cool. I mean, I say that a lot, but this has my stamp of approval. It's cool. It's not bonkers, but it's cool. Next up is a movie that I have not had. I've, I've looked at this movie for years. I saw it once, but I forgot. And uh, I needed to add this to my collection. This is the uh, Criterion Collection Blu-ray release of 1962's Carnival of Souls. This movie is so cool. I mean, it is also cool. The black and white photography is, 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 is just, it sticks with you. It's like a dream. It sticks with you. It's like after watching this movie and stuff, it seems like one of those things where you have that dream where it seems real, but it's not real, you know, but it's a dream. It's really it's really strange. It's a good... Th this is a great movie. It was um, directed... Stars and directed Herc Harvey. Now, he was kind of like an um, actor. He did, like, you know, small movies and stuff like that. Um, it, it's basically a young woman in a small Kansas town survives a, a drag race accident uh, she's this guy's trying to race her and they go over a bridge and she she goes overboard um, on her way uh, she well, on her way to, to, to take this job um, in Salt Lake City as the church organist she um, gets in that race with this guy. You know, she's not really racing him, but she goes over the bridge. Um, if I cleared that up, I don't, sorry guys. Um, and then um, en route, she's haunted by bizarre apparitions that compel her toward an abandoned lakeside pavilion. Um, this was made by uh, industrial filmmakers on a small budget. The, the eerily effective B-movie classic Carnival of Souls was intended to have, quote, the look of a Bergman movie with the feel of a, co a cocktail movie. Um, and in its striking used locations and spooky organ score, I believe it succeeds. Uh, Herc Harvey's macabre masterpiece gained a cult following on late night television and continues to inspire filmmakers today. I agree with that. Uh, it's got some. It's got a really good uh, documentary on here from 1989 called "The Movie That Wouldn't Die." Uh, it's got a 2000 uh, tour um, update on the location, filming locations, um, which is just you just have to see this movie. To understand it, I, I always group this movie with Night of the Living Dead because they they came out around the same time. They're both black and white. They're both uh, low budget and um, first time filmmakers, and um, they were both independent. So what that meant was they uh, fell into the public domain. So these were movies you saw growing up everywhere because anybody could put these out because they're in the public domain so you would see all kinds of copies of these you know night of the living dead and all kinds of forms and carnival of souls uh but this is a great um i believe this is a four yeah 4k digital transfer that's clean it is crisp beautiful it's a real truly beautiful movie it's a, it's really just a great Afterwards, you just wonder, it's like, man, this guy, once you learn about the filmmaker and you're like, man, he really made a great movie. I mean, really, you know, talented. But I don't think he went on to make anything else, really. Uh, not not much and not anything close to Carnival of Souls. Um, and finally, guys, I got this new set. I've had my eye on this for well over a year or more. Um, this is a 14... Uh, 14 of the uh, Sherlock Holmes movies made with Basil Rathbone uh, that were made for Universal um, between, I think, 1940, 
no, 39, I think. I think it kind of technically started with the Hound of the Baskervilles. No, no, wait a minute. I'm kind of wrong about that. Anyways, tw- I think 20th Century Fox actually uh, released these. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, guys. Um, my brain was going everywhere because I have a lot of these on Laserdisc and they were released through 20th Century Fox, but anyways but anyways the complete sherlock holmes uh this is a new well it's a couple years old it's a new collection from mpi um i think they did a really good job it's got a slip case um and it's got all it's got all 14 movies with uh, basil rathbone and um i can't think of the guy's name who played watson but anyways, it's got movies like The Hound of the Baskervilles, The Hound of the Baskervilles, the 1939 version, not the 1959 version that Hammer did in color. That's really good also, but this is really good. Um, all the way up to Dress to Kill. Uh, it's got Terror by Night, of course, House of Fear, Sherlock Holmes, Faces Death. Uh, I love these movies. These are so great to come back to. I mean... Basil Rathbone was born to be Sherlock Holmes. I mean, he to me, he's perfect as, as Sherlock Holmes. Um, I really like what Robert Downey Jr. did uh, in the newest version of uh, Sherlock Holmes. I, I, I really dug those movies, and I, I, I'm sad that they only made two so far. I wish they would make another one, you know, to make it a trilogy. But, uh, but yeah... Um, Robert Downey Jr. and uh, what was it? Um, what's his name? Jude Law were really good as that. But anyways, um, but really they can't stand they can't stand next to Basil Rathbone and and Watson here because they this is just truly the greatest ones in my in my opinion. Um, I got this set at Walmart. It was thirty nine thirty nine dollars. Um, I had a Christmas gift card, so I finally got it. But yeah, it's kind of pricey, so if you can find it, um, snatch it up immediately. This is one of those things that will go out of print and be on eBay for $100 easily. Because uh, it's got a lot of movies on here. Um, this is definitely something you want to snatch up and get if you can. If you can find a deal on it, get it. Uh, don't hesitate. I hesitated, and I, I finally got it by gift card, so... If you're if you're a fan, get it. It's really nice, uh, nice edition. I don't think it, it doesn't have much in it, does it? No, it doesn't have a booklet or anything like that. But they're kind of in here, like arranged in this cl- case and stuff. So, you, but you know, it's better than nothing. And these uh, these movies were restored uh, by U- UCLA. Uh, so really cool i'm glad that they preserved these and they look as good as they do so that's about it guys for this episode um i hope you liked it i hope you like these uh choices i had this week um these are some really good movies i'm i'm being dead serious with you i mean just looking at them right now i'm just like man i want to watch these again because these are just some really good movies i had a lot of fun with these let's go through them one more time uh, Carnival of Souls. This is the Blu-ray Criterion Blu-ray uh, number. Uh, what's the spine number sixty-three? We got Arrow Videos edition of Jack Hills uh, Pit Stop. Highly recommend that. We got uh, the uh, Severin release of uh, Nightmare Castle uh, Barbara Still movie it's also got Castle of Blood and Creature uh, Terror Creatures from the Grave so it's a three a three fur next up this is th- this one in Pit Stop you have to go get you just have to see these movies somehow Fear is the Key love this movie check it out it's got my stamp of approval on it I love this movie great and of course you have to get this no collect no movie collection is is complete without sherlock holmes i'm telling you you got to have some sherlock holmes in there this is the complete sherlock holmes the basil rathbone 1939 to i believe 1946 or 47 so um there you go sherlock holmes 
So I hope you guys liked this episode. I did. I love these movies. I want you to go see them. So I hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, comment. Let me know what you th what you thought about these movies. Uh, especially uh, Fear is the Key. I mean, am I being just ridiculous about it? I just think it's a great movie. Maybe I need to take a sedative or something. But I'm just totally love this movie. It's great. Um, but uh, comment. Let me know and um, what you thought about it. And uh, that's about it. Watch good movies like those. And uh, be safe out there. Uh, summer months coming. Uh, be safe out there, guys. And uh, hopefully soon our cinemas will open and we'll be able to go to the cinema again. We'll get some new movies rolling out and stuff. I'm, I'm dying to go to the movies to see something new. Um, until next time, guys, I'm Mike. Keep watching good movies. And adios.